Welcome back again to yet another episode of the MSFS 2024 Realism series. In the last episode, we took off with the pilot tube and static port covers on. We needed to return to the departure airport and do an overweight landing, but luckily no one was injured. If you missed the previous episode, here's your chance right here. In today's episode, we will investigate the braking behavior in the new Flight Sim 2024. We will reject the takeoff after V1 in dry and wet runway conditions and compare both stopping distances. So let's get right into it. So we are right now at Cairo International Airport in Egypt. We will be using runway 05 center which has a length of 13,120 feet which is around 4,000 meters. I will be using the following weather conditions. For the dry conditions, clear skies, temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, QNH 1013 hectopascals and wind 224 degrees with 0 knots. For the wet conditions, same temperature, same QNH and same wind direction and speed, but we will have max precipitation, very dense clouds and high humidity. And I will not be using the reversers, not even idle reverse thrust. The aircraft that we are going to be using today is the Airbus A330-300. We have 280 passengers, 76,600 kilos of fuel and our takeoff weight will be around 232,600 kilograms, which is a little less than the maximum takeoff weight allowed for this aircraft. So here we are at runway 05 center, everything is set up and we only need to set takeoff thrust. But before we do that, let's talk about rejected takeoffs. A rejected takeoff occurs when a decision is made to abort the aircraft's takeoff after the roll has commenced but before becoming airborne. This critical maneuver is typically executed due to significant abnormalities such as an engine failure, a fire, configuration warnings or instructions from air traffic control. There are some key considerations in rejected takeoffs. Let's start with the decision speed, which is also called V1. V1 is the maximum speed at which a takeoff can be safely aborted. A decision to reject the takeoff must be made at or below this speed to ensure the aircraft can stop within the available runway length. Beyond V1, the aircraft is generally committed to takeoff and aborting may lead to runway overruns as we unfortunately saw in the past. The second thing to talk about are speed regimes. Most aircraft manufacturers recommend that operators identify a low speed regime, for example 80 knots and below, and a high speed regime, which is typically between 100 knots and above. In the low speed regime, pilots should abort the takeoff for any malfunction or abnormality, whether it is actual or suspected. In the high speed regime, on the other hand, the takeoff should only be rejected because of catastrophic malfunctions or life threatening situations like an engine fire or an engine failure. And there is also the consideration of temperature affecting ground speed. So in high temperatures like 40 degrees Celsius, the air becomes less dense. So to achieve the same amount of lift at lower air density, the aircraft must move faster over the ground, which means a higher ground speed. For example, if your rotation speed VR is 150 knots indicated airspeed, the corresponding ground speed might be 170 knots in hot weather. In low temperatures, air becomes denser. The aircraft achieves the same lift with a lower ground speed because the air provides more force per unit of speed. For a rotation speed of 150 knots indicated airspeed, the ground speed might be even less, like 140 knots in cold weather. This means of course that in hot weather conditions, since the ground speed is higher at VR, the aircraft consumes more runway during the takeoff roll. If you reject a takeoff, the higher ground speed increases the risk of a runway overrun. This is exactly why I chose the same temperature of 15 degrees Celsius for both scenarios. And there's also something called the density altitude, which you can sometimes read or hear in an ATIS of an airport. But to keep things simple, let's just skip that. Now let's get back into the cockpit and start our takeoff. Okay, ready? I am ready. Takeoff. Mantoga SRS runway auto thrust blue. Thrust set. Eighty knots. Check. V1. 
one. Rotate. Stop, stop, stop. No, no, no. What? I forgot my phone. Are you out of your mind? Are you serious? You're gonna kill us all. I'm gonna report this. So as we saw, wait, hold on. So as we saw in the flight sim 2024, the runway condition will have an effect on the stopping distance of the aircraft if the takeoff is aborted. Of course, this reckless behavior would never happen in real life. In case of an emergency or a failure after V1, the pilots would have taken off, assessed the situation and then returned back to the airport. And even if they would abort the takeoff, they would have used max reverse thrust, especially if the runway is wet. But regarding the braking behavior in the sim, could this be close to reality? I guess the answer is yes. This concludes today's video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button and write a comment about what you think regarding this experiment. Thanks for stepping by and as always, see you in the next one and have a good day.